All right, let's go now to Pennsylvania. We'll talk with Jason. Hey, Jason. Hey, how are you, Andy? Hey, doing well. What have you got, Jason? Uh, real quick, um, to the one, the first question is two parts. So Matthew twenty-eight, when they're talking about the Great Commission, yeah, uh, and, and you know Jesus is basically telling us, you know, he says, "Go and do, do this, these things, make disciples, and baptize them." So my question is, number one. What is that? Can you give me some ideas on what that looks like? And then the second part of that question is, why do so many ministries tell you that you got to be doing this and you got to be reaching out to your neighbors and you got to be doing? Is that part of what we should be doing? A little curious on regards to what was going on and really what's behind the scenes and what, what, what's being said through Matthew twenty-eight sixteen through twenty. Okay, all right, great question, Jason. I mean, certainly, you know, you you look at the way that the Great Commission is taught. And if we're not careful, then every Christian gets a guilt complex because we're teaching the Great Commission as if it all falls on that individual. And you know how we are. I mean, we Christians can be very neurotic, right? I mean, we're interpreting every verse as being about us. We're interpreting every sermon as being directed uh, exclusively at us, individually at us, especially uh, it seems like Americans can be very individualistic instead of corporate. Uh, the Jews had a corporate sense of being God's people. Likewise, we need to have a corporate sense of being God's people. And so when we read something like the Great Commission, we need to recognize who he gave it to first, and that would have been the 11 disciples that were present. And secondly, that he gave it to them corporately, and historically it was given to the church for throughout time. So... You know, he says, all authority has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. Well, did they do that? You could argue that Paul did it a little bit. He wasn't there. He wasn't the 11, proceeding to Galilee, in this case, in, in uh, Matthew. So uh, Paul did it, but he wasn't present for this instruction. Uh, Peter, where did he go? Well, to Israel. James, where did he go? To Israel. John, where did he go? To Israel. Uh, what about the rest? Well, for the most part, they went to Israel, and only Brother Paul went over there to other nations. So, hello, uh, 11 disciples. Uh, excuse me, were you not listening? <laughs> Did you not hear the Great Commission? Uh, go make disciples of all the nations. Um, and so you see that this is given corporately to the church, and it has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled, and it's in process. I mean, my goodness, the Word of God has been blasted all over the planet to so many nations and so many languages. You look at Wycliffe Bible Translators and all the work that they've done, and you look at all the missions groups. Just this morning in our message, I was talking about uh, all the uh, mission work that the believers of the USA and Canada have done. I mean, North American missions outnumbers any other uh, mission work on the planet, and we just need to see that the church globally, the church in China, the church in Europe, the church in Africa is extremely active. And this Great Commission is happening. Uh, it's going on. But if you take this individually and put it on your shoulders, quite frankly, like I did as a teenager, young adult, in my teens and early 20s, I, I already mentioned it, but, I, you know, halfway houses, jails, prisons, uh, Greece and Italy on the streets, subway cars, going from car to car, trying to do the Great Commission uh, with a Lone Ranger attitude, uh, then you are going to get nothing but a guilt complex. And so, you know, you pop over to First Peter uh, 3 and verse 15, and what does it say? Well, it says... Be ready. Um, be ready to give an account of the hope that is within you, uh, but with gentleness and respect. So that's just a readiness. Now that is, is sound thinking. Just be ready. Be ready to give an answer to every person that asks you about that hope that is within you, but with gentleness and respect. Whoa, that's cool. So you don't have to disrespect them. You don't have to cram it down their throats. You don't have to force it on them. It's not grace in your face, whether you like it or not. <laughs> it is gentleness and respect. 
So, you know, uh, again, if we were going to take the Great Commission individually, then John dropped the ball. Uh, if we were going to take the Great Commission individually, then Peter didn't fulfill it. Uh, James, well, he lost sight of his mission. If the Great Commission is something individualistic, then even those 11 disciples who were present for it uh, did not follow through. Um, they did not bring the gospel to all the nations. So who has brought the gospel to all the nations? Well, God has been working for thousands of years in bringing it all over the planet through the bride of Jesus Christ corporately, together, communally, and that's important to see that. As far as the individual attitude, we covered it, First Peter. Just be ready, man. You don't have to be militant. Just be ready to give an account of that beautiful, beautiful hope that is within you. And you don't have to worry. Love does not act rudely. You're not supposed to be rude about it or, or um, you know, uh, dogmatic and ugly about it. Uh, but you can be ready with gentleness and respect. So that's an honorable way to operate in dependency on Jesus, knowing that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is fun and freeing and respectable and not embarrassing, and you can be proud of the character that you display in your friendships and relationships, uh, not burning bridges but building bridges where you can. Hope that helps, my friend. Reach out again anytime.